chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Berea, <laughs> can't say that one, Regia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power, all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our second New Testament reading is from Romans chapter 8, verses 22 through 27. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now, and not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, grown inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. Our Gospel reading this morning is from John, chapter 15, verses 26 through 27, and 16, 4b through 15. When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Savior, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You are also to testify, because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you, so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning, because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Not, not, yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, for if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks 
be to God. Anybody interested in praying for the preacher today? The preacher could use a prayer today. Comes Alexa. Let's join in thanking God for this day and for this life. Maybe not exactly the life we pictured, but still a life full of possibility. We thank you for your spirit that you offer to us fully. We ask for that spirit to be showered on our pastor today and throughout all the next days of her life. And then each of us, as we become open to what we don't expect, but what God will fill us with and enable us to do in his name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Boy, we read these lessons out of order today, didn't we? according to the chronology that happened in scripture. What should have come first of the lessons we read? Here's your Bible quiz du jour. You should have read the gospel lesson first because Jesus is still with the disciples talking to them. Then what would have been next? The day of Pentecost, followed by the letter to the Romans. But let's talk about the gospel lesson for a moment. When the advocate comes, whom I will send you from the Father, the spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. What is an advocate? I don't know what an advocate is. Anyone here ever advocated for someone else? Some of you are courtroom people, and you know what an advocate is there, right? Where else do you have advocates? Healthcare, you can have an advocate. Amen. If you have one of those, you're great. Anybody else know where you can have an advocate? Toby. And what? When you have staff members working for you, you advocate for them. That's true. How many of you ever learned to ride a bicycle? Anybody here ever learned to ride a bicycle? Do you have an advocate then? Do you have a parent running along beside you holding up the bicycle? Now, some of us did not. Some of us had a father who put you on a hill and said, good luck. <laughs> but um, anybody here ever run alongside a bicycle? Anybody here ever do that? That's being an advocate because the word advocate here for Holy Spirit literally means someone who comes alongside you. I always think of Barbara Nall, who was a member of my congregation in West Virginia, my first West Virginia congregation. I got there in July, and they said to me in September, they said, you put anything up this year? I said, what do you mean put anything up? You put anything up this year? I said, I put up with a lot of stuff from you people. I put my hair up a couple of times. They said, no, did you put anything up? Did you do any canning? I said, no, I've never canned in my life. Well, Barbara came over with a bushel of green beans and a, a pressure canner and some other things that she gave me, and she stayed the whole day. And I said, this is so much fun. This is so great. And she just said, yes, yeah, snap, snap, snap. A lot of fun. She taught me how to can because there's one thing about being reading in the book and then hearing the pressure canner going on the stove and you think it's going to blow up. Then the jars start going ping, ping, ping and you think they're going to explode. And she said, no, it has to do that. That means it's sealing itself. Well, I was so excited. I went out the next day, bought my own bushel of green beans and found out it's not really fun when you're doing it by yourself. It took me forever to get that second bushel canned. But... She came alongside and showed me what to do, taught me by her example and her patience and kindness through the whole process. So an advocate does, and Jesus promises an advocate to them. He says, you're sad that I'm going away, but when I'm gone, everything's going to change. You're going to have me with you in a different way. Next week is Trinity Sunday. I don't know if I'm going to go there or not, but you all know the confusion we get when we talk about the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, how they fit together, how they're different how they're the same. It's a difficult thing to talk about. It's very clear in this thing, this reading here, because the Father sends the Spirit as the Father sent the Son. 
And let's look at the Pentecost story. It's a wild one, isn't it? We have lost sight of it. We read it so many times, we say it like ho-hum. But imagine being here and the roof blows off the church and tongues of fire touching people on the head, but they're not burned. They start speaking other languages or hearing in their own language words that are being spoken by someone who does not know how to speak their language. Anybody here grow up speaking a different language? I think we had Toby grow up speaking French, didn't you? You didn't speak it, but you... Young, you spoke some French. Miss Florence, did you speak a different language growing up? Can you speak here? or Yes. And imagine what it would be like to hear me preaching and hear it in your own language. I had an experience like that once in Japan when I was there with the mission team. We were visiting different sites, and we went to a university. There was a young man speaking and singing, I'd rather have Jesus. I recognized the tune. I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. And we was listening to him because Japan is a very, very nominally Christian nation. I mean, there are 1% of people who profess Jesus Christ in Japan. But he started preaching, and I understood what he was saying. And it was the weirdest thing. And I said to somebody later, they were explaining what he had said to the group. I said, how do I know that? And she said, it's a Pentecost moment. There was a lady from Ecuador in West Virginia who could understand me preaching, but nothing else I ever said to her did she get. When I preached, she said, God, it was my heart to you. And I hear you speaking in my language. You believe it? Some people are skeptical on stories like that, but I tell you it happens because the Holy Spirit is still active in the world today. The Holy Spirit can still open hearts and ears and minds and everything else in us. It can open our doors to people who are different. It can open our doors to people we might not think are the people we want in church. But God can open all kinds of things. Remember Jesus on Easter evening? He shows up at the little Pentecost where he breathes on the disciples that receive the Spirit. This is the big theophany here, though. God is acting in a powerful way. God is pouring the Spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons and your daughters? Wow. Your daughters? Are you kidding me? I told you so many times when I was telling people I was going into the ministry, they say, honey, God doesn't want you to be a pastor. God wants you to marry a pastor. I said, no, God does not want me to marry a pastor. And pastors are crazy people to marry. I can tell you that right now. Yes, people said to me, my husband was a little quirky. I said, if you think being married to me is a trip to King's Dominion, think on. But God can open our hearts to all sorts of things, and God can open the lips of all sorts of people. You just have to be ready for the moment when the Spirit speaks to you to say yes. I told you the story about going to the South African embassy when I was in seminary and being arrested there, protesting against apartheid. Nelson Mandela had been in prison for 26 years when I was there. I didn't want to be arrested. My mother certainly didn't want me to be arrested, but what happened was I was going down to stand on the other side of the road to pray for the people who were going to be arrested, and that's when I told you I think God called me a wimp and a wuss and said, why don't you just pray for people and who are taking a stand? So it's taking a stand yourself. And I took a stand, and I was arrested for it. It was not the to get my liberal card stamped. It was to say to people that this is wrong in the name of Jesus Christ. And I didn't get Nelson Mandela out of prison, but me and a million of my friends sure did because we took a stand and said no in the name of Jesus Christ. So we have a theophany going on in this story, and I think there's a little, a, a little theophany in Romans because God doesn't always speak in big words and big powerful images. God sometimes speaks in a tiny little voice, the still small voice. Raise your hand if you gave birth to a child, or some of you did it more than once at a time. Katie's got twins. Let me hear the groans of childbirth. Let me hear it says, you know, all creation has been groaning in labor pains. Let me hear some labor pains. Come on, you remember, right? What? Wasn't groaning, what was it? <laughs> it was more of a scream, a dull roar. Okay, you're trying to protect us all. How many of you remember those pains? A friend of mine was home from the Navy visiting her parents. Her father was diagnosed with cancer and died, so she went from Christmas leave to 
bereavement leave, and then she went into labor. She called her commanding officer and said, do I have to get to Bethesda Naval Hospital? And her commanding officer said, no, go to the hospital. We'll pay for it. Just go. Her husband still remembers her and would not get near her for their second child because every time she said, honey, I need you to hold my hand, he knew she was going to hit him really hard. <laughs> she said she was glad she did not give birth in a Navy hospital because the language she used was not exactly, it was like sailor language, but to a delivery doctor who was like, wow. But then we have that image of, you know, creation is groaning for adoption. Oh, what does it say when we don't know how to pray? God does what? Through the Spirit, it intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. I get goosebumps every time I read that or hear that. My mother died a year ago yesterday, and I didn't know how to pray anymore because I couldn't pray for her to live because she was in agony. I couldn't pray for her to die because who could pray for their mother to die? I prayed, God, let your will be done, let your will be done, let your will be done. And the Holy Spirit, I knew, was groaning for me and sighs too deep for words. That's a theophany. That's God acting. It's God pouring God's spirit into our lives. And then we have hope. What does it say? For in hope we are saved. Now hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Hope. It's in short supply in this world, but we have it in abundance in Christ Jesus our Lord, don't we? I watched the news the other day as Vladimir Putin sat with Xi Jinping. And I thought, these are two men who are just dedicating their lives to increasing their own wealth, their own power. What if we turned the power of the world into God's power? What if we let God be the one who directed us? There would be no poverty. There would be no problems in our cities and our schools everything else we would have everything we needed because we would trust God above all else so I thought what if we had every Christian in the world stand and put their hand toward Moscow and say in the name of Jesus Christ stop it or to China stop it or to our own politicians sometimes when they fight each other stop it in the name of Christ we have power at our fingertips we just don't ever use it how many of you feel powerful Raise your hands. Does anybody here feel powerful in Christ? I do. We have power. We have the presence and power of God here with us in our midst. We just need to use it. We need to let God direct us in our daily lives, and then we'll know the power and the presence of God in a new and powerful way. There's um, one of my favorite writers is Pierre Teilhard de Chardin was a French philosopher and priest of the last century, two centuries ago now, actually. And he said, one day when we conquer the wind and the waves, we shall harness for God the energies of love, and then for the second time in the history of the world, man will have discovered fire. I love that. Because we're talking about love. God's power is in love. It is not in breaking people down. It's not in hurting people. It's in love and redemption because Jesus said to them, the ruler of this world is broken. Who's the ruler of this world he's talking about? He's talking about evil and Satan and the darkness of, of life. But he said in that, Christ will overcome it. Christ has overcome it. We just need to live like people who have overcome. So go out into this world feeling empowered. You have power at your fingertips. Use it. Use it to build someone up instead of tearing anyone down. Use it to say no to the evil of this world. Use it to say yes to the good that is ours in Christ Jesus. I read you a list of food that can change someone's life. Toilet paper will change someone's life. Detergent can change someone's life. If you have the power to buy that. If you have the money to buy it, buy it and bring it in. If you can come and have a BBS, we'd love to have you. You don't have to have any acting experience. You just have to look scared when we tell you to look scared or excited. They look excited. Miss Destiny back here is going to be married for us all week. She's got some speaking parts. And John's going to be um, Simeon. We need Nana with Simeon. We need, we need some people. We need you to take hold of the power that is yours. Don't say you're too old or too broken down, because I am broken down right now. I tell you, I have been broken down by my life. 
and I will be there and I will preach. That's my last week and ordained ministry is going to be VBS week. I'm so excited by that. We need you all to take hold of the Spirit and let the Spirit move in you and through you and you will do amazing things in Christ's name. Yes, you will. Amen, amen, amen. Do you believe me? Do you believe me? And say, come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Come Holy Spirit, come. Amen. Let us sing.